Welcome back to Gold Fries. Sorry, I have not been having any videos for the past days because after I fixed my aircon, which is up there, I um, got tired. I did have a was uh, preparing some videos last week, but yes, I got tired and I decided not to publish anything for a while, take a break. And now I'm back. And in this video, this is the AMD 4700S desktop kit, which is it's called a desktop kit because as you can see, it's a board with processor, with memory, and with cooler. It is a kit that you can plug into your system, attach your graphics card, and it will run. I got my unit at around 300 US, specifically Malaysian Ringgit RM1300, which is slightly above 300 US, of which I think it is of great value. However, there are shortcomings when it comes to this desktop kit. AMD's product page for the 4700S does not provide much details of the processor itself. And at the bottom, you see that there's a list of compatible graphics card, of which I would like to highlight that I have used an AMD RX 6600 and an AMD RX 5700 XT graphics card with no issues with the 4700S. The AMD 4700S is said to have a 3.6 GHz base clock and 4 GHz boost clock. However, I am unable to verify this as all the software that I have run, even the latest version, are unable to give me proper reading when it comes to the clock speed. Now, it's I do, actually do not know where to begin because it's all interrelated. So we'll just go with the cooler first. So this is what the cooler looks like. And I can tell you this cooler sucks. When I run the blender test on this system, phew, the processor goes to 100 degrees Celsius. And it is super duper loud. Now check out this sound recording when it is running on load. Now to make things worse, this fan is not a standard size. I cannot use those typical 92mm fans. I cannot replace the fan. The cooling mount is also not of a standard mount. So there's no way for me to change for a better cooler. So I have no idea what to do with it if ever it spoils, but I'll probably figure out content for this one. And then over the rear, huge back plate that cools the GDDR6 module. Yes, it uses GDDR6 memory, 16 gigs of it. We'll talk about that later, okay? Now, let's move off on to the second thing I want to touch on, which is the storage capacity of which you only have two SATA ports no M.2 slots at all. So you're stuck with SATA drives. Not a bad thing. It's just that if you want more storage, this is not the way to... This uh, thing, this 4700S may not fulfill your needs for that. Now, this is a last minute add-on to the video. I found out that as I installed the AMD 4700S into the Cooler Master NR200P casing, the SATA ports are in conflict with the power supply cage. Now I'm using an SFX power supply and the cage is at the highest point and yet I'm unable to connect the SATA cable. However, the only workaround is to use the top SATA port and using a 90 degree angle connector. This means if I were to use a Cooler Master NR200 or NR200P, I'm stuck with just using one slot unless for some reason I'm able to shift the power supply towards the front. Up next, let's talk about what's at the rear. As you can see, over the rear here, there's sufficient USB ports and there's a LAN port and audio jack. That's all good. However, there are still limitations on this one, which is not as good as you think. For example, the PCIe slot here, it is PCIe 2.0. And check out this benchmark of which I use this um, AMD Radeon RX 6600. Yes, it, it's uh, towards the mid-low range graphics card. And even so, the performance is hampered so much and it drops to almost half. That is uh, mainly due to the PCIe slot. Um, up next, let's talk about the processing power. From my experience, although it's an 8-core 16-thread Zen 2, the performance, however, it's actually based on my Blender test. I use Blender to test a multi-core workload. It's performing like my Ryzen 5 3600 and 5600X. As you can see, it's between both of them. Why is this so? I believe it is because of the memory. You see, it has 16 gigs of GDDR6. 
GDDR6 is great for transfers, high speed. So you can see the ADA64 benchmark here. This uh, configuration here is better than what I have with my 3200CL16 kit. However, when it comes to latency, of which it is actually something that AMD systems are dependent on, it falls short. And that actually hampers the performance capacity of the processor. And bear in mind that the memory is on board. So you don't have to worry about getting memory. You get a fast transfer rate memory, though low latency. However, you are not able to upgrade the memory because there are no dim slots. So you're stuck with 16 gigs forever. And up next, let's touch about the power draw. Power draw wise, it idles at 85 watts wall draw and on load, it reaches about 108 watts. So the power draw is uh, pretty high in my opinion. So um, at 85 watts. Now let's touch about this. It, it sounds like an abrupt skip to another topic, but bear with me. Now, some people may say that this is suitable for HTPC setup. At 85 watts idle, uh, with a GTX 1050 Ti, that's very high power draw because HDPC units, I'm expecting something far less, maybe 50 watts wall draw, 60 at most. However, this is at 85, it's high, and even on idle, it's warm. So, or for an idle, for a HDPC setup, you could actually buy a used 2200, 2200G, 3200G, they'll work great actually. So furthermore, this one is that you have to buy a graphics card to use with it. And even the GT what, 710, they, are cost, they will add on to the cost. It's not an APU where you can plug on the motherboard and just output through HDMI. It has no HDMI port or anything. You still need at least a very low-end graphics card. So what can one ben what can one where can one use this kind of setup? Well, since the performance is like an a Ryzen 5 3600 and 5600X, I think it works as a video editing setup. I mean, personally, I'm using a 3600 right now for my video editing purpose. I find it fine, although some of you may insist on Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9s. Personally, I think this one. Uh, attach it with a uh, whatever graphics card you are not gaming but you can attach with a uh, say gtx 1650 huh? or or some radeon you can get some older radeons like the rx 570 or 400 series and use it as a for a video editing rig because it still works fine for video editing and that's pretty much it. I personally will not use it for HDPC and I definitely will not use it for gaming at all. After all, you've seen the benchmark. Uh, the performance hit is really bad when it comes to um, graphics. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my review of this um, 4700S kit. So take all that I've mentioned into consideration so you will know whether to get this or not. To me, um, running on load, is uh, fortunately it's not noisy on idle but once load comes in it is really noisy so part of the thing that I might actually do is find some way to cool it with something more silent I cannot be replacing this lousy sink however maybe I can do something with the fan
that's all from me for this one thank you for watching i hope you found the video useful and informative if you like more of this kind of content do check out the videos at the side and subscribe to my channel i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye